cover of Riverdale. So we are excited tonight to have entertainment tonight. Leanne Aguilera moderate today's panel. So without further ado, let's bring Leanne out. or actually it's the afternoon. Um, my name is Leanna Aguilera from Entertainment Tonight and like all of you, I absolutely love Riverdale and I adore this cast and creator and so I just want to say I'm so honored to be your moderator for what I hope will be a very memorable panel. Now we are going to start off this panel with some special words from our creator and executive producer Roberto Aguirre Sacasa, so please welcome him. as possible, and um, 
one of the things that Luke had talked about since season one is he really wanted his good friend Shannon Doherty to come onto Riverdale. And we tried to make it happen uh, uh, a few times. Uh, it didn't work out. But when we were putting together this episode, we really wanted to include her. Uh, so Shannon Doherty is in, in 401 in a, in a really <laughs> emotional role. Now, I understand that Shannon has already filmed her scenes and she's been able to share a lot of scenes with all of our cast members. What was it like welcoming Shannon to the Riverdale cast? <laughs> I mean, I think it was cathartic for all of us. Um, I, I think it, it really put the cherry on top of, of that episode and, and really made a nice tribute. Um, and she was overjoyed to, to have the ability to to share some of the burden uh, of Luke's passing that she had gone through uh, in, a, in, a, in a sort of cathartic setting with the rest of us. And it was, um, yeah, it was beautiful and it was touching and she's so talented. And, and it was also so close to Luke that it, it seemed like it seemed like a perfect fit for us. Roberto, could we be seeing the lovely Molly Ringwald make more of an appearance this year as Mary Andrews? Yeah, we, we, we definitely will. Um, you know, it, it so happened that Mary was actually Mary, that Molly was in Vancouver shooting an episode around when, when, when um, Luke passed. And I saw her and she said, you know, please don't introduce Archie's uncle, please. I'd love to help out. I'd love to be more a part of this. And we wanted the same thing. So yes, yeah, she'll, be, she'll, be, she'll be Archie's mom uh, more or less full time this season, which we're really thrilled about. KJ, hey, how are you feeling about welcoming Molly in for, for more episodes this year? It's great. I think uh, it's going to be nice for the fan. We've never really gotten to dive into that relationship too much. So, yeah, it's going to be cool. Now, we didn't want to just keep this emotional. We want to lighten the mood a little bit. So Roberto brought something fun for us. Yeah, you know, it's funny. The, the show does, it does, it is dark. And, and we're always putting our characters, especially Betty, through the ringer. <laughs> um, but we will. But, but one thing we celebrate every uh, at every wrap party is we do a blooper reel. And I, I think we want to share with you guys um, as a reminder that really this is just so much fun. And, and the, these are like hilarious, we have a hilarious cast. So this is uh, the blooper reel from season three. Gargoyle kings and a queen, Griffin queen. We had murdered nuns, serial killer fathers, more boxing matches than I can count, KJ. And cults with adults posing as teens and then harvesting other teens' organs. A lot happened in season three of Riverdale. For our cast, uh, what was one of the most memorable twists when you got that script? You want to kick us off, Lily? Twists? Yeah. Uh, probably the harvesting organs situation. <laughs> but it all made sense because I'm like, it's the farm. I'm like, did you have this idea the whole time? I, I've been wanting to do a har organ harvesting story. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> uh, uh, so we, we talked about that big, being the big reveal, and I, I think, you know, when, when Chad <clears throat> came to do that role, we talked a little bit, and then he, that script came out, and he called me, and he's like, I'm harvesting organs, and I was like, yes, Chad, you're harvesting organs. <laughs> you didn't tell him that before he booked No, I did not. I did not. <laughs> Will we be getting more harvested organs in season three? What's the vibe of season four, Roberto? You know the the, the vibe. Um, I you know this the, this year the kids are in high, are seniors, um, and one thing we haven't really you know because they're too busy hunt, hunting serial killers and stuff is we haven't really dug uh, dug deep into the high school world. So this year we're really playing senior year. Um, it's, it's the last time that they're going to have a senior prom. It's the last time they're going to have a homecoming game. Uh, so we're, we're, we're really digging in deep uh, into the high school franchise. And I understand we're going to have a new familiar face within the hollowed halls hallowed house of Riverdale with a new principal. <laughs> that is true. Uh, principal Weatherby joined the cult, the farm, and he, he, he um, was, was he ascended. He ascended. He ascended. <laughs> Uh, so we're welcoming uh, Kerr Smith, who's going to be playing the new uh, principal, Principal Honey. And uh, we wanted to have Kerr on the show since season one. Of course, he was iconically in Dawson's Creek. He was Jack. Uh, uh, and he already, I think, has filmed scenes with most of these guys. What's it been like welcoming him to the Riverdale Halls? 
he's really good. <laughs> he actually, I just shot a scene with him a few days ago, and he was very talented and very great in that role. He's a legend. We have to talk about, of course, the biggest cliffhanger that we saw at the end of the season three finale, which was that Betty, Archie, and Veronica were in a flash forward to spring break. They were in the middle of the woods, wearing not too much, and covered in blood, and the only thing we saw of Jughead was his iconic beanie. Cole, when you first read that script, what was your reaction? Ugh, no more smelly hat. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I like it. I mean, I, I, think, I think the beanie and, and the whoopee cap has served as kind of the most iconic symbol for the Archie comics for, for 75 years, aside from, from KJ's rooster top. Um, and I think, I think the act of, of burning it is, is a really good hook, and I think it's really interesting, but I'm not going to spoil anything, which is why you guys are even listening right now. <laughs> Lily, KJ, and Cammy, what was it like for you to film that scene? Cold. Cold. <laughs> it was like three in the morning, and we were naked. And we had no idea what had just happened, so we, they were just like, you know, just staring into the fire. Yeah. Like, okay. Just look serious. Roberta, are you going to make us wait all season before we get those answers? Uh, no, we, um, this season, um, uh, that's one of our big, big mysteries, obviously, what happened to Jughead <laughs> and the kids that night. Uh, and we are building up, it, the, kind of the middle of the season, our mid-season finale is going to be the, that night depicted in the flash forward. And in episodes leading up to it, we're going to flash forward to other events that the, that, from that night and immediately after that night. So, so you'll start to kind of piece it together, I think. We also left off on a major cliffhanger with Miss Cheryl Blossom as she welcomed her brother Jason back into Thistle House. Madeline, for Cheryl, can you talk us through her, her mindset a little bit right now and, and, and why she'd like to welcome Jason? I would love nothing more. <laughs> well, a lot of people think it's funny that she has her brother in her basement, but when you remember that Edgar was hypnotizing her and using her brother's dead body for her to speak to Jason, it kind of opened up this wound again for Cheryl, and now she's got this Jason-sized hole in her heart, and I think the only way she could cope with the loss again is to just bring him back and not really deal with it. And so right now we're in this place where her mental health is at an all-time low. I mean, she's talking to a dead body, and I think it's actually quite heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. it's, we do have some funny elements to it, obviously, because it's Cheryl. You know, we keep it light, but it's like, when you look at it, keep it light. it's going to be a little bit dark. But I also understand that Cheryl's going to have a lot of responsibility this year because she's looking after her, her twins, the little cousins. I'm not sure who a better guardian would be, me or Nana Blossom, but I guess <laughs> we're going to figure it out. Maybe we'll throw Tony in the ring, see who can duke it out for the babies. <laughs> um, and I'm also really excited because we're getting a Halloween episode this year. Why is this so exciting for Miss Cheryl Blossom? Well, it's her favorite time of the year, naturally, as the gothic heroine that she is. So it's going to be a very fun episode. And we're, it's episode... It's a, uh, episode four. We've never been able to do a Halloween episode because the schedule's never worked out. So this year, episode four airs on October 30th. So uh, we've got a really fun, spooky episode for everyone. Has someone died? Yes. <laughs> Actually? Has mm -hmm. yeah, someone died? Someone at this table? Someone important? No, no, no. No one at this table. No one at this table. Okay. So no one Do I still have a job? Or... <laughs> Roberto, have you already figured out what our characters will be dressing up for for Halloween? You know, it's so funny. We, I do know what uh, Archie is going to be... Huh? Spider-Man. Spider I'm calling it out. I know what Archie's going to be uh, dressed as, and we're trying to get clearance on some uh, DC uh, uh, comic book characters for Cheryl and Tony. Cool. And then, and Betty is at home uh, giving out candy to trick or treaters. So, of course, No fun allowed for Betty. No fun allowed for Betty. No, no, no. It's, she's got you. Got a fun, fun story, scary story. So I'm the one who dies. <laughs> I'm the one who looted the killer that night. Let's keep the conversation going with focusing on Betty. Um, you know, Betty and Jughead have always had a lot in common, like their shared love of sleuthing and the ability to look amazing in leather jackets. Um, but now they also have a shared half-brother, as we were introduced to Charles in the season three finale. How is the introduction of their real half-brother going to kind of shake up their dynamic this year, Lily? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think there might be some awkward 
family dinners in the future, but I also think maybe it's a good opportunity um, if, you know, once, if and when Alice returns from the farm for maybe Alice and FP to rekindle something, because I think that's really cute. Um, but I think, I don't know, they're not related by blood, so I guess it's fine, right? <laughs> There are categories for that on the internet. <laughs> um, but Lily, what would you say is Betty's biggest obstacle as she goes into season four? She, she now knows that her mom was an FBI informant and she wasn't totally drinking the farm's crazy Kool-Aid. Yeah, I mean, I think she feels a little betrayed by her mom, clearly, for having method acted her way through that entire season, um, being the FBI informant. Um, but also she's grieving the loss of her father. Um, whom she feels like she can't really miss because that would make her a bad person because the Black Hood and Hal was so, was a murderer, but he was also her father and there were years of him being good to her, so she's kind of struggling to understand whether she can miss him or not and whether that's morally right and Jughead is, is there for her during that, which is really sweet. Well, and Cole, I understand that Jughead is once again introducing audiences to a new school in Riverdale. Yep. What can you tell us about his academic journey in season four? Uh, I think, I think this is, well, this is a prep school, uh, so Jughead gets whisked away uh, on a scholarship to uh, a very sort of gossip girl, uh, Upper East Side, preppy, uh, pretentious, <laughs> Richie Rich, uh, Silver Spoon. Richie Rich is a character on Riverdale this year. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> no, he's not. Uh, <laughs> um, and he's going to be the new blood. Uh, and uh, he he's part of this writing scholarship, so so he's part of this little dead poet society that they have over at at uh, at this new school. Um, and Jughead's already kind of a pretentious character, so he's going to be out pretentious by all of the uh, incredibly tall and, and beautiful people. Um, but yeah, I think it's fun. And, and uh, the school also kind of serves, I, I'd assume, maybe I'm just speaking out of turn here, but uh, it serves as the setting for what, the flash forward? Yeah, that, uh, um, um, some of the, the, the um, one of the big mysteries of the season is kind of centered around Jughead at the, at the new school, which is also kind of going to be a big rival school for Riverdale High. So Archie and the Bulldogs will be um, having a football match with the Stonewall uh, Stags, which is the name of that. Stonewall one. what? Stags. What are stags? Stags. Like a horse? Like a deer. Like a deer? Like a deer? Like, like, a deer? Yeah. With horns. With horns. like a cow. The first time hearing of this. <laughs> Stonewall Stags. I understand we're going to be seeing a lot more of our sibling dynamics this year and seeing a lot more scenes between Jughead and Jellybean, which I'm really excited about. Cole, what are you hoping to see from their sibling dynamic moving forward? Uh, I really like the dynamic in the comics where Jughead is so overprotective uh, of Jellybean, which I, which I thought was kind of cute in the digest. Um, but it's also kind of... It, it, it's kind of a weird thing for an older brother to, to do, so I, I'd like to see I'd like to see how Trinity works with feeling I don't know maybe a bit uncomfortable with that. I I I, I like older protective Jug quite a bit. No one's scared of you, bro. <laughs> no one's scared of you. I'm scared of me. <laughs> Um, Camila, at this point, Veronica Lodge is the savviest businesswoman or business person in Riverdale right now. She's absolutely crushing it. Um, what, has been, what has it been like for you to see the evolution of her character from season one through, th through season three? It's been great. I mean, I feel like we're finally in a place where Veronica is no longer back and forth with her dad. It's like a very clear villain in her life. Um, and I think part of her storyline last season was her coming to terms with like taking him down and, and being very adamant about that, which she succeeded in. Um, so I feel like getting her father in prison was her finally accepting that. Um, and I think in season four, we're gonna see Veronica struggling um, with the repercussions of that because Hiram is a vengeful person and um, he's gonna be causing trouble. And I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about like what's ha what starts to happen in episode two? Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, say yeah. it. I can say that, right? He's he's sending paparazzi to her. 
and um, kind of causing, which causes a distraction at school and gets Veronica in trouble. Um, and because Veronica's making headlines, that's making it uh, complicated for her to apply to colleges. Well, also, both of her parents are in jail right now, so what does that mean for Veronica's home life? It means there's nobody home, and she can invite whoever she wants. Wink, wink. <laughs> JJ, have you been, are you going to be shooting any scenes in the Pembroke, then? I think there's a lot of scenes to shoot in the Pembroke. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, Cam, I understand you're also going to be having some extended family dropping in. There is. There is an extended family member in Veronica's life that she didn't know existed, um, which is definitely going to be another part of Veronica's storyline in season four. Anything else you can tease for us? I don't think so. <laughs> you guys know about the storyline you two are in. No, I just heard of, of this through Madeline. But Madeline can take it away. <laughs> okay, well, all I know is you put your hand over my mouth if I say anything I shouldn't. Well, Veronica and Cheryl team up for a business venture and get into some sticky trouble. That's <laughs> we have a, We have a fun, uh, uh, Veronica and Cheryl are gonna become business partners, uh, kind of combining uh, different aspects of their lives. Um, uh, and it's gonna be really, really fun. It's a little bit like risky business. Ooh, I'm excited. Is Maple Too. Syrup involved? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> We're making a maple syrup rum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was supposed to be a secret. <laughs> KJ, obviously. <laughs> KJ, obviously, Archie's going to be wrestling a lot this year. Wrestling with a lot this year. Um, but I understand he's probably a lot. wrestling a lot as well. <laughs> well, he does every single sport out there at this point. Um, probably still boxing, but um, he's going to be dealing with the, the death of his father. But what else can you tell us about his journey in season four? Yeah, um, it's going to be a lot of football this season, which is going to be fun. Uh, I love working with Charles, doing all that. Charles Mountain who plays Reggie, so that'll, <laughs> that'll be nice. Um, me and Mad Dog are spending a lot of time together this season, too. Um, it possibly hey, could be... The, the big announcement about yes, Mad Dog. Don't forget the announcement. Tell, tell them. that I'm really, really excited about, actually, is we're finding out his real name, which is something I just, you know, I know you guys are really excited about. We're it. all really excited. We're all very excited about it. <laughs> No, um... That dog needs a name. And he could possibly be, uh, being introduced into the Bulldogs, which, which could be fun. Um, but yeah. Well, and you can't talk about football and Archie without mentioning music. Mm -hmm. So what can you tease for the fans that's coming up? Call for starting a band. Called? The Archies. <laughs> <laughs> Roberto, why did you want to bring this iconic Archie's comic band to life this season? You know, you know it's funny, when... Originally, we when I originally pitched uh, the TV series, uh, in my mind, the end of season one was going to be a big battle of the bands between the Archies and the Pussycats. And of course, the show then became what it, it became. And as we were getting ready to do a bunch of stories set in the high school, because it's senior year, I was like, it's this year or never. So we're doing a battle of the bands episode, which I think will be really, really fun. Who's on what? Yeah, no, are you just playing? Break the instruments, Roberto. Yeah, well, in the in the cartoon, uh, Archie's guitar and lead singer, Veronica is tambourine. No, that's Betty. I'm pretty sure. Oh, that's Betty. Is the tambourine? Yeah, no. I think she's the tambourine. Uh, Jughead is on drums, and then uh, Veronica keyboard. Maybe saxophone. Huh. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Saxophone. Saxophone for sure. Saxophone. <laughs> Cole, I think I speak for all of us when I say you blew everyone away on the song 17 and the musical. <laughs> so is Jughead singing going to be a more regular occurrence? Uh, I don't know, Roberto, is it? Jughead uh, joins the a cappella band at a cappella club at the front of the No. Oh my, oh my god, I actually like no. That would be so good. <laughs> I do love every time we get to hear Madeline sing. She has such an amazing voice. We'll be he hearing her more this year. As well. Yeah, definitely. We'll, we'll, we'll still be doing. Uh, uh, well, we're, we're definitely going to do a musical uh, episode the way we did in season two and three, and we'll have songs kind of throughout the, the season as we normally do. Thanks, Leanne. <laughs> That's all I know. 
Um, well, it wouldn't be Riverdale unless we, of course, talked about some relationships. So we're going to go through some of our favorite couples right now. And uh, for our cast members, you can tell us what you know is coming up for them and then also what you think their ideal date would be. So uh, kicking us off, Madeline, what can you tell us about Cheryl and Tony in season four? Well, I love them together. Uh, we come off in season four starting with them in a fairly strong place, like they're starting off well. Obviously, Cheryl is keeping a body-sized secret from her girlfriend, so I think we'll probably get into the stickiness of that in a little bit. Um, but I, Madeline, truly hope and believe that Shoni is endgame. I think they're so sweet together, and Tony makes out such a great side of Cheryl. So we'll see, I guess. It's up to this guy right here. Um, and then I guess our perfect date would be going on the motorcycle and just, you know, going around the block, staying at home, watching the movie, I don't know. Amazing. Cute stuff. Yeah. Very cute. Um, Lillian Cole, what can you tell us about Betty and Jughead in season four? <laughs> But, uh, but, oh, love you too, guys. Um, we are, you know, Jughead is going to prep school, um, so he's only going to be in Riverdale on the weekends. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I think they're, Betty is really supportive of him, and she thinks he's such a good writer and, um, and fully supported him going to this school, um, because she wants the best for him and for his education. You know, he wants to be the first Jones man to go to college, so she's super supportive. Um, I, as far as their relationship, I think, I think they're strong, but I'm sure something's gonna happen. Yeah, I, I mean, it, as of now, they're super strong, um, but I'm, yeah, I'm sure the prep school in there, I'm sure there's gonna be, you know, uh, 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 a little bit offbeat outside our manic pixie dream girl inside of the prep school. It's just <laughs> the same kind of offbeat as Jughead. Yeah. Um, I have no idea, but as, yeah, they're super strong right now. Um, and I think the distance can make the heart grow fonder. <laughs> and if you had to plan an ideal bughead date, what would it be? I was thinking probably like an like an exit game. You know those games? Yeah, the, the, the escape, escape, room. Room? escape room. They'd solve it in like half a second. <laughs> Can't escape your feelings. <laughs> right. Can't escape your feelings. KJ and Cammy, what can you tell us about Veronica and Archie this year? Pretty wow. solid, eh? Solid as ever. Archie's solid. killing it. Archie's killing it right now. I think with both of them going through stuff this season, I think it's good to have each other and it means a lot to both of them. Yeah, I think especially with everything that's going on in Archie's personal life, we saw Veronica um, last time when something tragic happened. She didn't know what to do. She didn't know how to be a girlfriend for him. And then this time we see her really stepping up to the plate and being there, being supportive, um, being strong for him. And it's made them stronger. And their ideal date? Their ideal date? I don't know. Like A shower. Under the shower. <laughs> Probably a shower. <laughs> Another fireside yeah. rendezvous. <laughs> KJ's face. <laughs> Sweet. Cool. Uh, <laughs> Roberto, uh, which other of our Riverdale couples will be heating up this year? Will we maybe finally get an on screen kiss between FP and Alice? Yes, we will definitely be getting an on screen kiss between FP and Alice for sure. Uh, one of Kevin's old flames is going to be coming back as well. <laughs> oh! <laughs> well, which leads me uh, into our next question. Now, I'm so thrilled to have all of our actors here today, but of course, do you want to talk about some actors and characters who are not here today so we can kind of get a little scoop on what's going on with them in season four? Roberto, fans have been asking for years about Tony Topaz's backstory is this the year we're going to get it? We are definitely getting her backstory. I, I will say that we do know some stuff about, uh, about Tony's. Uh, we, know, we met her grandfather once. We know that her uncle um, wasn't supportive uh, when, when Tony tried to come out. So we are definitely going to learn a little bit more about that. And, we're, and I think we're gonna, we are going to see Tony in a good place. Um, and, and we've got some fun stuff uh, planned, for instance, on Halloween for them. 
Like what? Do you want to spill the tea or? So we will be getting more. Yes, so for sure. Fantastic. Um, now, Kevin, he can never <laughs> seem to catch a break. Uh, I'm excited that it sounds like an old flame is coming back. What else can we expect from him in season four? You know, one of one of my favorite things is that in episode two, we are telling a really strong Betty Kevin story, and uh, I we were reminded when we every year we rewatch the pilot that Kevin was always hanging out in Betty's bedroom and they were always gossiping and stuff. So we're getting back to that uh, friendship, I think. And, uh, you know, he's going to be trying to direct a musical in which no one dies. And, and He's a little, uh, Betty's a little mad at him yep. right now because the last time we saw him and her, he was dragging her across the floor, if you remember, to get her organs removed. Right. So there's right. some reparations to be made. Veronica would never do that. Just say no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, with Josie off in New York, aka starring in the upcoming CW series, Katie Keene, is there a chance that we could see her return to Riverdale this year? Yeah, a Ashley, she, uh, Josie already came back. She came back for episode one. Uh, we wanted everyone uh, to be a part of that episode, and she, she came back. Um, and what about Mr. Reggie Mantle? You know, the, the, uh, we're, we're definitely going to see a lot of uh, Charles and KJ alluded to uh, seeing a lot of uh, football this season, which we're going to do, and, and Charles, and I think one of the first things that uh, kind of happens is a reckoning between Reggie and Veronica, mm. uh, because we went from Reggie's over at Veronica's house, and then next thing we know, Veronica's kissing Archie uh, uh, under that big tree. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a scene in um, episode too, which is really sweet. We get to see a little bit more of Reggie's vulnerable side. And there's a beautiful Reggie story in that yeah. episode. Yeah, we, we kind of get underneath, um, you know, why, why Reggie acts the way he does. And, and, you know, we've alluded to some problems in the Mantle household. Uh, so we're kind of going to unpack that in a bit. And it's a great friendship story. Which leads me perfectly into the fact that I would love to focus on some of the female friendships that we have in Riverdale. Because in my opinion, it's some of the best friendships that we've seen on screen. Um, we know that we're going to be getting more from Madeline and Cammie together. When you guys get to share scenes together, what's your favorite part about Veronica and Cheryl's dynamic? I think they're like similar but different. Yeah. You know the way they communicate. They have, both, uh, they have a similar energy. Fiery. Yeah, they're fiery. They don't Cheryl's sassy. 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 Campy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Smart. Yeah. Witty. Scary. You know. <laughs> yeah, probably that too. I feel scary. like it's like fun to see us together because we're... We're such a duo. We're such a duo. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. also fun to see the cousin dynamic between Betty yeah. and Cheryl. What is it like for you guys to go toe to toe in those scenes together, but also still have those heartwarming moments? Close. I mean, I think Betty's kind of accepted Cheryl for who she is, and she takes everything Cheryl says with a grain of salt. And it's like, whatever you say, Cheryl. Like, she's just not really too affected by her insults, but um, nothing I love more than hearing you say Cousin Betty. It burns <laughs> my heart. Maybe we can go to group therapy together. Family therapy, you're like my oh, last member left. Yeah. That'd be nice We for can us. watch the twins oh, Because together. both of our parents were serial killers. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Have so much oh. in common. <laughs> Um, and of course, every time we get to see V and V together, it's so much fun. Uh, Lily and Cammie, what would you like to see from that dynamic duo this year? More. Just more. More. <laughs> we just want to work together more. I love V and V. Um, I think they're so cute when they're together, and they're just like a really good duo, and they're always very supportive of each other, and I think they're definitely going to need to lean on each other a lot, considering both of their parents are now away. Um, so they're definitely going to be leaning on each other, which will be good to see. Why don't you, Betty, you should come stay at the Pembroke with me. She's at the X Cooper house. <laughs> it's what it's called in the script. The, the X, X Cooper house. It's not even the Jones house. It's just the no. X Cooper house. Yeah. Well, I have an extra room at the Pembroke. You should come through. I've lived there like a couple times throughout the show and I always end up back at the ex Cooper house <laughs> in my bedroom that it's never all, changes. It's, it's always weird when someone comes to see you, Lily, and it's at the Pembroke because you've lived there for a few episodes. Yeah, I remember that. Um, and also
also for our three ladies, will we be seeing the return of the Vixens this year? You yes. will, bright and early. Yes. Is there a, do you enjoy shooting the Vixen scenes or is it more difficult because it goes into the extra choreography? I think it's fun because it's all of us together and like we get more time together to rehearse. I guess if you look at it that way, it's fun. Yeah, and choreography at this point is like a normal thing that we do now. I would say like at least, you know, half the episodes <laughs> Even are more so outside forever. of cheerleading than anything else. We have a lot of like dance stuff. We have a pretty fun one coming up. I'm not going to talk about it, but... Yeah. Lily, do you want to answer it once and for all? Is Betty still a vixen? <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, I hope not because I hate dancing. Uh, they have like, let oh, them so do, good. let them do. <laughs> that was a dig at it. Um, I thought you said I was good in the musical episode. Uh, well, oh, oh, oh. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, I just let them dance and I'll just clap. For okay, them. but you could see. Candy store, you, Lily, you were great. Yeah, we should do a storyline and get the boys in the Vixen costume and get us going. Oh my god! Yes! Like, what's it called? Powder Cup? The Powder Cup. The girls play football. We did that in my high school. Roberto, that'd be a very long story. Who's your cheerleaders at? Yeah, for sure we'll do it. Great. Nothing's done, it's decided. It's written. Cole and KJ, it was so fun to see Archie and Jughead's romantic adventure in season three. What can we see from them together in season four? It was pretty romantic. Um, <laughs> first time I've ever said that word. <laughs> Not the last time. But what would you like to see from their friendship moving forward in season four? I, I don't know if it's okay for KJ and I to work together because we it's legitimately not. don't stop laughing. <laughs> We waste so much time on set. Just looking at each other makes them laugh. They start giggling. No, it's because Cole makes this ridiculous noise. Go. Go. <laughs> and you can slip it in anywhere. It's so silent. Um, no, but we we've gone through we've gone through scenes where <laughs> uh, we've gone through scenes where KJ and I will make sure that we're not looking each other in the eyes on our reverse coverage because. The second we do, we will crack up. And I think the whole crew has caught on now, and that's probably the best reason why we shouldn't work together is because just timing and scheduling is just going to get it's so backed up. Well, for Lily and KG, will we be seeing <laughs> more from Betty and Archie's friendship? Really? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Which is sad, because they grew up together. They were the I original BFFs. I think, uh, but I think there is room this season that I mean, after talking to Roberto, I think there's a lot of room for us to play this season. Uh, we're going to start opening it up for fan questions. So if you guys want to start lining up or... Uh, yeah, They're already lined up. up. There you Perfect. Go. What's your name? What's your question? Hi, my name's Danielle. Um, Hi. I'm a huge fan. Love the show. Um, my question is, the CW is so big on Dare to Defy and Open to All. We did get a lot of Shannon this last season, but when are you going to include more plus size representation? Um, I, I mean, listen, I Shannon has an open invitation to come back whenever, whenever she'd like. I think we're open, we are open to all, and and I would say probably this year we are we're meeting a lot of new students this year, so stay tuned. What's your name? What's your question? Hi, my name is Addison, and my question is for Cole. If you could You hear play, that, everybody? <laughs> if you could play another character, who would it be and why? Uh, a character on the show? Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> Probably, I would... I really always wanted to be the, the silent guy behind the bar just drying a cup. <laughs> like, over and over again. Like, what do you have? That's Reggie. Uh, yeah. So, uh, whoever that is, that's, that's me. Hi, what's your name? What's your question? Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Um, uh, Camilla, we might have met like a few months ago. I took this stuff with you. It's a long story. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, it sounds like the whole story ended, though. <laughs> it was at Coachella, so. <laughs> oh, as it happened. Um, my, uh, question is, um, what was it like to work with 
Luke Perry, and as a role model, what did you love about him? Is that a question that for all of us? us? Um, you, yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, he was like a mentor. Go ahead, Mads. Luke was somebody that I called, actually, Comic-Con is hard. It was my, this is my first Comic-Con, all of ours. Um, my first Comic-Con ever, I was paired with Luke for a lot of stuff, and it was kind of my first big press event, and he was somebody I called for literally everything, and he was one of the most beautiful humans I ever met, and so to be able to have ever worked with him and met him and been close to him is an honor for me. It's hard, but it's amazing. Tell me, tell them the story you told me about what Luke said. Oh my god, don't put me on the spot. Um, so, I was actually, it's kind of a different story, but I'll tell a story about Comic-Con. I was just telling Lily and Camila that the first Comic-Con I was really nervous because we didn't have a lot of talking points and we didn't really know what the show was about. And he was like, I'm going to show you something. And he went and did something and came back and he was like, just wait. And like a month later, he sent me a screenshot of a headline that people were asking how he never gets paparazzi on set. And he said that he dresses up as me on set, and that's when he doesn't get paparazzi. <laughs> and he was like, see, none of it even matters, Mads. Just do whatever you want. Like, it's all good. <laughs> He's like, don't take it too seriously. And that was Luke in a nutshell. What's your name and what's your question? Hi, I'm Helen from Mexico again. And my question is for the whole cast. And what's this? Frank, that you gain with your character between the time of the series, like since between season one and three. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Question. Yeah, sorry. Oh, what's the strength that your character has developed since season oh, one? Oh, what's the strength your character has developed strength. since season one into season four? Mm, Being question. authentically yourself. That's what Cheryl's mm. doing. Mm. Mm. How to run a gang 101. <laughs> How to embrace your darkness, I guess. Camila, please. Staying, staying strong through adversity. I think all the boxing, I think Archie's definitely gotten a lot fitter. <laughs> Physically strong. Physically. How to fight a bear. <laughs> Weird to punch a bear. Do you stand by that, Roberta? I, I do, I do. How to survive a bear attack, 101. What's your name? What's your question? Hi, my name is Montana. Um, I just want to say I love you all, and to the rest of the cast that aren't here, we love you and we miss you. Um, so, we've seen a lot of, like, Instagram videos of, like, Lily when the boys were doing, like, jumping jacks in the other room, mm -hmm. and then KJ and Melton with the water bottles. Yes. So, what are your favorite things to do as a cast during downtime on set? Really stupid thing. <laughs> the most stupid. Ignore each other. I, I like to... I'm trying to get everyone to learn this card game that I'm obsessed with. She has. She taught us a card game and... Yeah, you like it because you win every round. <laughs> you haven't retained it quite yet. You'll get there, Cole. You just have to be patient. You just have to let me win like a couple hundred <laughs> more times. <laughs> Hi, Robert Fixon. What's your name and what's your question? My name is Jennifer. Hi. Hi. <laughs> My question is for Cole. What's your favorite scene with Lily? You know, I actually really liked uh, the Seventeen song. Yeah. I thought that was a lot of fun. Um, and I thought the way they grounded it in, in the the trauma of seeing his childhood home turn into a drug lab, as we're all so familiar with, <laughs> uh, as one does. Uh, yeah, I, I, thought, I thought it was really well done, and it was a lot of fun to shoot, um, and it turned out really well. And you're so good. Thank you. Well, go on. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, I mean, you, you prided yourself on never singing when you were on Disney Channel. Cole pretends he can't sing, but he's actually... But he, he does. I like to keep it fresh. See, when you tell them you can't, and then it, it, it turns out you can, it's just all exciting. Everyone gets all excited. The old bait and switch. Hi, River Vixen. <laughs> oh. No. <laughs> what's nah. your name and what's your question? Um, my name is Bella. Hi, Bella. I love you guys. You're so amazing. And uh, my question.
question is, do you guys do other activities than acting? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Go to Comic Con. Go to Comic Con, we go to the gym. <laughs> we, I go rock climbing every now and then. He runs. The boys go camping sometimes. Go camping. What? Lots of stuff. Sleep? Lots of I don't sleep. Love sleep. <laughs> Cry. <laughs> what's your name? What's your question? Hi, my name is Kylie. Um, my question is for Cole and Lily. My question is, um, since you guys are the most um, popular couple on this show, Bughead. Oh, whoa. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I knew that. I'm, I'm glad you said it. <laughs> I'm glad you're standing all the way over there. <laughs> Anyways, um, you guys, <laughs> your guys' name is Bughead. What type of bug are you guys exactly? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> That's the very first time I've ever heard that question. Great. Congrats to you for an original question. Um, I'd say probably a praying mantis because they eat the men's heads off when they're finished. One hundred percent. Uh, uh, what? I'll give you the, mo the most recent one. Uh, Cole was preparing for a scene pretty intensely, <laughs> and when Cole's preparing for a scene, he goes he goes hard. So like an emotional. Emotionally, he's you know getting in the zone, and he walks in the room, and I <laughs> I just throw this piece of paper so far so hard at his head. <laughs> <laughs> And he looks at me, and he's so serious as he's saying this. He's like, I was so in the zone just now, I legit wanted to kill you. <laughs> and I looked at him, and I'm like, I looked at Lily, and Lily's like... <laughs> I felt so bad, and then after a scene, he did a good job, he came up, and he... Hey, are we cool? Are we cool? Oh, that's what that was yeah. about. Yeah. The tea. <laughs> what's your name, and what's your question? Hi, I'm Sky. Uh, hello, Legends. Oh. My <laughs> hello. <laughs> My question is, Archie Comics has had such a crazy, long, varied history with so many different characters and storylines. And I would love to know, for anybody, which character would you like to see make an appearance on Riverdale? Predator? <laughs> what did you say? Predator. Didn't they do a crossover yeah. with Predator? Yeah. Yeah. Roberto, or can you tease anything? Uh, yeah, you know, we we, um, we do have, we are resurrecting a couple of, of characters and we're having a very big meeting um, this week to try to figure out a very big story that would, that, that's kind of a classic one from the comic books. Cool. But I can't say anything else. Hmm? I try. <laughs> What's your name? What's your question? Uh, hi, my name's Noor. I'm such a big fan of all of you. I love you all so much. Oh, thanks. And... Oh my god, I love you. Okay. <laughs> um, my question is, if you guys could do a crossover with any show, or just specifically CW, what show would it be? Sabrina! The Flash. <laughs> any, other, any other crossover? I'd like to do Sabrina. Supernatural. Yeah, I love those guys. Um, and they're so tall. <laughs> so tall. <laughs> they are so tall. I saw Pat Leckie outside and was like, hey man, what's up? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, it's, it's their last run. And it's incredible that they've gone as long as they have and, and have filled Hall H every single year. And, uh, and yeah, I want a piece of that pie. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and Lily, you had mentioned Sabrina, so Roberto, anything that you can tell us? Woo! No, I mean, I, we, we, I'd love to do it, we'd love to do it. Uh, it's just a lot to, to figure out. I will say that most likely we will be doing a crossover, even though it's, it, it, it breaks the space-time continuum, we, we probably will be doing a Katie Keene uh, Riverdale crossover. Woo! Woo!
then moving on to our next fan question. What's your name? What's your question? Hey, my name's JC. Since we just got shown that awesome blooper reel, was there ever any bloopers or like line mistakes that were so good that they just got, they stayed in the show because you just loved it? Mm. 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 No, I feel like the really good ones that we love are usually way too inappropriate or yeah. problematic yeah. for them to ever show. <laughs> Yeah. So they stay in a vault somewhere. I mean, I, I think I think the show does a, a great job with having a very specific style of writing. Um, and the words are chosen very carefully, and the character names are said all the time. And so the kind of improvisation, I would say, might actually do a disservice to the continuity of the writing, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, they, they edited out a lot of the swearing in that blue. <laughs> uh, and we have time for one more fan question, but don't worry, we have a special surprise for all of our fans. What are your names and what's your question? Um, my name's Riley. I'm Max. And my name's Jornette. Um, oh my gosh, you're so scared. I love you all. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. um, my question is um, if you could change anything in the script, um, for your character, what would it be and why? I would change. Sorry, Roberta. <laughs> but I would change that he didn't get attacked by a bear. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I. The prosthetics take a long time. How, how long, KJ? A couple hours. Every time I have my shirt off, which is every day. Woo! <laughs> More like prosthetics. <laughs> get it? Because. Oh, that one was, that one was really lost aesthetics, because... Oh, cool. Um, um, if I think of another one, I'll crank it out. While our uh, Warner Brothers reps bring up a bag to me, my last question for our cast out here is, what is the one thing you would really like to see for your character in season four? Throw it out now, and maybe Roberto will edit it. Therapy. Happiness. <laughs> Cole, start us off. Let's go down the line. Oh, man. Okay. I think, well, I'm on the spot. <laughs> uh, I think I would love to see more dream sequence stuff uh, with the classic outfits. Um, I'm still convinced that that's the actual timeline, and that Jughead is asleep and just dreaming of Riverdale. Um, but I, I, I love those classic outfits, so I'd love to see that kind of sequence again. Lily, what would you like to see for Betty? Um, a Come chance on. for her to cut loose um, and do some fun things, perhaps, because um, she's been through a lot. So I don't know, just maybe she needs to party it up a little bit or see your year. Probably not, though. She's apparently passing out candy during all of these. So. <laughs> the Other stuff happens. <laughs> okay. KJ, what would you like to see for Archie? Um, I think we've seen kind of the dark side of Archie a lot of the time, especially when he was um, dealing with Hiram. Uh, so I think it would be cool to kind of see where that comes from and, um, yeah, kind of explore that a little bit. I think it'd be cool to see like a little bit more of Veronica's back story, a little, especially because of you know now Jughead's going to a prep school, which is which is Veronica's past basically. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if there's some kind of uh, story there with her, um, you know, reconciling her past. <laughs> What's happening over here, Madeline? How, what would you like to see for Cheryl? I wasn't kidding about therapy. I think she needs to get in there yesterday, um, and uh, just uh, be a little happy, mm -hmm. a little smile. More Shoney. <laughs> Obviously more Shoney, always more Shoney. Um, and right now, we are going to have our cast members choose two names, and mm. those people who ask the questions will uh, win the chance to have a Letterman jacket and then signed Pop Funkos. So, Madeline, would you like to pick the first name? Oh my god, the pressure. <laughs> Here we go. Do we all pick one? Uh, just two. So, Cammy, will pick the next one. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Should I, do I, Cam, read this? Read it. Right now? Yeah. 
Yeah. Are you ready? Danielle Zavala. Shut up! <laughs> it's you. It's you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for...